Hey there, so in a previous video, we talked about how 8Base will create for you and manage all of the GraphQL resources or schemas that you need to perform CRUD actions on any table through your API endpoint. Know though that that is a type of functionality that's totally extensible through the use of resolvers, which are a type of custom function 8Base offers. And we're gonna jump in right now and take a look at the basics of how a resolver works and how you can deploy a custom one yourself so that you can add any type of functionality that you really need to your API endpoint uh, by developing these functions. Okay, so two quick things to go over before we get started. First off is that I am working in a workspace that was created um, using the Quick Start app that you can find on our documentation. So if you go to docs.8base.com and click on Click Start right here on the left side, you can go through the first five steps of this and get that directory uh, on your computer locally as well as deploy it and have some data po records populated in there. The next thing that I'd just like to say is as we go over custom functions, know that you can always dive in the documentation as well and look at the documentation for custom functions. So this will help you understand which arguments are getting passed to your resolver function or any other type of custom function that we'll go over in subsequent videos as well as you can look directly at resolvers here to get a better idea of what's going on. So let's jump right in to our text editor, Sublime, to where, like I said, I have the Quick Start app uh, here locally, and I'm in the server directory. So inside of the server directory, we have an 8base.yaml file. And this is a really important file because it is what declares all the resources that will be deployed to your project uh, when you run 8base deploy from the command line. So this is really how you provision a workspace with uh, custom functions and with any other type of resource that you are provisioning through code, right? And so when we have a resolver function, and remember this function extends the GraphQL API. First, we have to give it a unique name. Then we declare its type, which is resolver. We have to give it a schema and a handler. So if you've ever written uh, uh, serverless functions, you know, let's say using like Lambda, um, you'll probably be pretty familiar with what a handler function is. However, the schema function might be something new to you. So let's just go quickly into that path, which is source, mutations, listing, share, schema.graphql, and we're going to look at this file right here. So what you're seeing here is something that says, okay, well, extend type mutation. Mutation's a base type for our API or for our GraphQL API. And we're creating a custom mutation type here called listing share, which needs an ID and an email, and it returns a success response, right? So that the success response would just turn a Boolean value um, of success, true or false, okay? So if we wanted to, we could Oh, excuse me, we could type our response, meaning that so if we gave it a type of custom result, and in there we wanted to say, okay, well, we have a key called status, which is a string, and we also wanted to throw in there a, let's call it, uh, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> All right, we could we could make that custom type declaration and use that here, right? So this is completely up to you to configure to be the function input and the function output as you want. And this is what's going to be then used by the GraphQL. If we go into the API Explorer, this is what will then be used in the API Explorer, so that you can look kind of be introspective into the function that you created and so it gives you all the information so i'm just going to return this to the state that it was in cool so now if we go over to our handler.js right this function is the one that you'll get in the quick start app but let's just walk through it really quickly to understand what's going on all right so first off in our schema.graphql file we declare that okay to the listing share function we get passed an id and an email they're both required arguments well then in here on the event argument that's passed if we were to go into event.data that is where we could find both id and email that's where those that information gets passed Okay. And so what's happening, remember this function right here is to being deployed to your server. It becomes a server function, server side function. So if you were to make a GraphQL call to listing share and pass the ID and email, it would populate into here. It would then create an API request on your server, right? So it makes the listing query, which is defined here, passing the ID 
that you gave it. And so it brings back all those listings. Or that specific listing, excuse me. Uh, if it doesn't get that, it would return a false status. And the reason why it's returning success false is because, and this is important, that is the type of response that we said this function has to return, right? So it's a typed response. So let's say that that wasn't a base type offered by 8Base. What you'd be expected to do here is have success response is success boolean required. And so that is what you can expect coming back from the API, true or false, whether or not that it was successful. Okay, so if we jump into here, jumping back into here, we can then see that, okay, well, if we get the response successfully, it will then, from that response, or we then, from that response, pull out the listing and the property. Um, we are then going to send the an email, because this is a listing share, it invites someone to come check out a listing. We're then gonna send an email using the send mail module, which is not important right now, to the email that was specified, and then adding just some title and email body information. And then once again, we give the declared type back, whether it's false or because the email wasn't sent, or true because everything ran co correctly. Right. And so one thing I'm just gonna point out here is that let's go into our 8Base workspace. I'm in the API Explorer, and let's say I was gonna to try to run a mutation. And I was gonna say listing share, but we can see that listing share isn't here because we haven't deployed it yet. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my command line, we'll clear this up, and I am, where am I? PPD, cool, I'm in the server project. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is saved. Save this, save this. And now let's run a base deploy. A base deploy. All right, this is gonna, might take a minute. So once it's uploaded, uh, we'll be right back. Okay, cool, so that didn't take that long at all. And now what we're gonna do is jump into our workspace to see uh, or validate necessarily how that function was deployed, how it can be used through the API, um, as well as just some other things that we can do to check out and kind of have some, some good oversight of it. So first off, if we go over to our APS workspace and we reload the API Explorer, uh, I'm going to delete this comment, and then we can see that unlike earlier when we looked for that listing share mutation, now listing share is right there. And just like we declared, if we want to give it an ID, and an email, Oop, let me just throw in a fake ID here, ID and email, cool, and I'm going to throw in a fake email address, hi at co.com, all right, and then just like we declared, success is the response type, right, okay, so just for fun, I'm going to execute this, and we're probably going to get a false back exactly because it couldn't find the ID, and if it did find the ID, maybe it couldn't find the email. Uh, another important thing to notice here is that already in our documentation explorer, if we go into mutation and we say listing share, we already have that documentation in here of what um, of what's available, right? So a super cool and powerful way to extend our API endpoint, and you can get really creative, obviously, and pretty much do anything that you need to do on the GraphQL side. And one thing that's worth mentioning too is right here we're playing with this in our API Explorer, but this is a function that you just created that would be used client side, right? So you'd be able to pass in to a GraphQL tag variables like ID and email and then have this function run. And so the last thing I just wanna show is that um, if we go over to logic, which is here on the left-hand side, we can see that the custom resolver function uh, was deployed as one of our custom functions, which we have it right here. And if we want to just look at the logs of it being run, we could just jump in and see those. And so right here that we can see that it was invoked uh, twice. And so, yeah, this is ready and good to go. All right. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Uh, we're going to go into writing more advanced resolvers really soon, as well as all the other different types of custom functions that Apebase offers. And so have a great rest of your day and looking forward to seeing you in future videos. Take care.